a box of old printed circuit boards, modules, bits of projects that were either built and torn apart, never really finished, didn't quite work as expected. The one thing that all of these boards has in common is the way they were made. The question I get asked more than any other is, how do you do your boards, your printed circuit boards? Because I'm building projects to fit in quite specific case sizes, I end up having to build custom boards to fit in the allocated space. And so there's only one way of doing that, and that is do it yourself. And I do suspect that quite a lot of people get excited about a ham radio project. They start collecting the parts and start planning. But they come to a bit of a halt when they get stuck on how to do a board. So I've been making printed circuit boards by hand, the old school way, for about hmm, 40 years perhaps. And so I'm just going to take you through the process that I use now so that you can see how simple it is to do your own artwork and come up with highly usable one-off printed circuit boards. When you build printed circuit boards from scratch, there's no pre-existing design template for you to follow, so you have to make your own. Start by drawing a scale outline of your board or boards with pencil on paper. The next thing is to look through the overall circuitry or the schematic, identify the blocks and then lay those blocks out on your board template. Here's an example. So that'll need an SA612, a dual op amp which I can do in surface mount, and then an LM386. I don't think I have any LM386s in surface mount, so that'll have to be a full-size 8-pin um, dual inline package. That's pretty tight. And then this back section here will have the two oscillators. Uh, they need a bit of space because I'm, my crystals are HC6U. They're not, they're not surface mount crystals. So they're gonna, the crystal and the trimmer are going to take up quite a lot of that space. The crystal will probably go here, trimmer here, and then um, surface mount oscillator. Or maybe I can arrange it mirror image so that the signals are coming, coming this way. Into, onto a bus that goes into the product detector. As you are working out what stages should go where, remember to consider the signal flows and keep inputs away from outputs. Also, think about how your board or boards are going to mount or stack. All of that gets us to the two blanks, and they'll be spaced kind of roughly, roughly like that. And for the moment, I'm just going to go ahead and get these boards so that the top one is drilled and uh, it can be stacked. And then I'm just going to clean one or both of them up, probably the receiver board. I'll clean it up front and back and I'll be ready to start laying it out. At this point, you've now got a choice. You'll have a scale drawing of your board with the regions or the zones set out. So zones here for the two crystal oscillators, zones here for the two bandpass filters with the relay between them, and zone here for the product detector and the audio stages. If you are feeling confident, you can now just go right ahead and start working with your marker pen on your blank board. So mark up those zones just with dots, trace the components on and start working to draw in the tracks, the pads, and the earth area based upon the schematic, just using these zones as a guide. However, you can continue to work on your paper scale model. And in pencil, you can start to lay out the individual tracks. So here's an example of this a scale model of a board that I made for another project. And what I've done is I've mostly worked it all through. So most of the tracks and pads are shown. That's more work, but it does allow you to get your track detail correct. So in this case, I'm going to wing it. I'm just going to work from 
this little map of the zones for each of the circuit components and I'm going to go straight to ink. Now that I've got the holes drilled for the 0.1 inch headers for this top board, now the fun starts. So I'm going to hand draw the pads that I'm going to need to implement each of these circuit blocks. And just doing it with a conventional marker. This is a Stedler permanent. It's just a good quality, fine tipped permanent marker. And I also use these Sharpies which have a bigger tip. They're great for doing earth planes and uh, heavier lines. Well, this is a tedious part of the job. So uh, I'm going to leave you and I'll show you the finished product in just a minute. During these long sessions of marking up printed circuit boards, I keep a radio going for company. making some progress with this board, marking it up in sections. So this section over here on the left will be for the two bandpass filters switched using this uh, miniature Telco relay. And this area to the right of the board is uh, for the two crystal oscillators. So space on either side for an HC6U crystal and a trimmer, one each, and uh, transistors, the surface mount transistors will be there and there. Next job is to draw up the pads for an SA612 product detector here, surface mount op amp, LM833 or something of the sort, TL072 perhaps, and then I think I'm going to mark up this area of the board here for a dual inline LM386. making progress. The pads for the dual op amp are on. So looks like I've just got enough room for an LM386 audio amplifier. And then this board will be mostly done. Board's all completely marked up now. The last job is just to go around and extend the, the earth plane around the edges so that as much of the copper is covered with earth plane as possible. And of course, seeing as this is a double-sided board, don't forget to ink up the underside as well, otherwise you have a very slow etch while all of that copper comes off. Fill the workshop basin with hot water.
back at the shack workbench, give it a really close inspection under a magnifier to make sure that there are no shorted tracks. And with a very sharp modeling knife, cut away any of the copper lands to make sure you've got no chance of any shorts. A phone camera on zoom makes a pretty good tool for doing a close inspection. Copper will of course tarnish within days or weeks. So what I sometimes do is to just give it a really light coat of a clear satin and it'll just keep it looking nice and polished. On the component side, I'm not going to bother to do that because all of the copper lands and the earth tracks will be soldered. So that board is done now, so front and back. Of course, if you want to make it for through hole components, then you'll need to drill the top of the board and uh, mark up between the holes accordingly. So this board took three, maybe four hours. I did it over a couple of nights. It's quite a lot of work in a way, but it's also kind of like the electronic version of sketching, I guess. If you've got this far in the video, thanks for watching to the end. And uh, I'll put this video on a playlist with other homebrew tips and homebrew project videos. Please watch some of those. Please like and subscribe. See you next time.